all, they can't, if they five man, if they just five man sit and defend here, like, they literally are doing nothing. That means you can be right. soaking. That means you can be pushing. Like, you guys are best when not fighting 5v5. Mm-hmm. Right? So what a, we were having trouble. It seemed like we were having trouble with 5v4s. You, you probably don't want to take a bunch of fights unless you've got the perfect synchronization well, of abilities. Because, like, correct. you'd have to... It would have to be like, um, it'd have to be like Muradin stun into Stukov silence on like Brightwing or Ming, or maybe Tassadar because ta- or not Tassadar Tychus because he can't leap if he's got the silence pool on him. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't. Let's see here. We'll do Melkor Cam for a little bit. So no, Varian's thing... top. Go ahead, Wendy. Two of the one thing. The first two games, I uh, recently I had um, remapped some of my keys, mm-hmm. and I hadn't gotten used to them yet. Mm-hmm. So I was just pushing buttons and not able to get things done or delayed on your engages. That's fine. Yeah. So I went back to how it was. That's fine. Do if you need to rebind your keys to make you play better, go for it. Just start building that muscle memory again. So, okay. So, um, man, you missed that stun. It's unfortunate. Bright wings like literally. Oh, you didn't throw your stun. Yeah, we it's were okay. uh, a little caught off guard. That that like, sh- that bright wing just walked at you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we're so, like, <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. yeah. So so Urel wins top all day. Like Varian does, is not a real boy till four, and they put him up there. So variant or Urel can like clear the wave and probably start camp and do aggressive things. Obviously they showed, we're cool. We're on wave clear here. Like I said, that is one weakness of our composition is our wave clear requires us to be quote unquote close. Okay, we're taking a lot of poke damage. So feel free to try and like hold the lane in a safer position or to just shoot what's in front of you. Like, obviously, we don't really want to shoot Joe, but, like, you're not going to be able to hit the creep safely until they're, like, here. So just, like, hit what's in front of you. Uh, did I lose Melkor here? There we go. So, like, once again, like, the wave's cleared. Like, Whiskey's down here, which is kind of dangerous, because now he's separated from the gate, and Melkor's trying to peel for it. And, like, sure, like... We take a lot of damage to still, like, just play, right? Like, we're... And the only reason they have a little bit of advantage is... Okay, hold on. Did we call start this camp? No. Uh, I'm like, we can't... This bottom camp down here cannot be started unless your wave is completely cleared or someone's dead. Because, like, they, they can just invade. We end up getting away with it. When I realize it's been started. Okay. Well, no, I think we were fighting over it. Like, we saw them start it. Jo- no, yeah. Whiskey started. No, no. Whiskey, Whiskey did started. all of this damage to it already. That's why I was asking, did we call this camp? But That must have been later on, then. No. Wait a second. I'm like, you guys... Wow. Like I said, just yeah. hit Joe. If she's in front of you, just hit Joe. Stukov's great into Joe, too, because you shut down her D. So, ended up working out just because they didn't respond to, to your stuff, either. Okay, it's two minutes and almost 15 seconds. I see Greymane walking to camp. Good, uh, excellent. Okay. Like I said, at this point, like, there's nothing that you really can do because your composition is all about race and you're, you're essentially T-Rexes. You've got tiny arms in your DPS, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, which is one of the things that's scary about taking... Rainer and Greymane. Like, there's a reason why teams take, like, Ming Rainer or Ming Greymane, just because you have someone that's got some range to help clear your stuff. But, right. obviously, the enemy team priority picked Brightwing and Ming, so... Okay, so then we're doing fine. We're just we're just hanging out. We're soaking. Yep, there's really nothing for Stukov to do. That's perfect. Of course, starts clearing. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, we have 25 seconds. We want to be first to Immortals. I'm seeing Whiskey rotate all the way up to top, question mark. Um, we're holding the cap, okay. 
whiskeys rotating. Yeah, uh, I wanted to ask specifically about mm -hmm. that. Cause, like, I know there's like an optimal timing. Yep. So, in general, if you like, if you watch how long it takes the minions to walk from here to the lane, it's about I think six seconds. So, so if you're able to take it, you know what I mean, and be able for yourself to rotate here on time, then they can't do both. If you take it earlier than that, that means that they have the potential to clear it and then show up and you don't get that side pressure. Um, but honestly, as long as you take it before the Immortal spawns, I, I have not been at a level yet where, you know, three seconds on here made the difference between me winning the Immortal or not. So, um, not sure what's going on up here top. Okay. Oh, Whiskey's trying to... Okay, right. so number one... I'm gonna just call it right now. We failed our objective. Yep. We're yeah, we're right. late. So, race comp must race. We need everybody that is going to be the racers, which in this case is both Whiskey and Wendy, need to be on this immortal on time. Like, sure, we're, we will still outrace them. Like, we can see they didn't do a camp, so they got camps to deal with. Your lanes are pushed out here. Like They're on their camp right now. Oh, you think so? All right, we're going to use cheating cam. Look at that. So, um, but yeah, in my opinion, we've already misplayed our composition. It's, it's, if we're going race comp, it has to be race on time. So, let's see how much time we lose. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We effectively lost 12 to 15 seconds of race time from Whiskey. And and if we have his DPS, like this Immortal, you, you guys win half time before they even clear this. Right. So, like I said, you still win half time because you're, that way your siege is outrageous. So, they chose to clear down here. You see that? So, it's like, and they, and so, and yours are still pushing... The one camp he got's pushing into this one. This camp will lose eventually. The shaman camp is stronger. But what's cool is half time. It's always on your side in the second half, so it's always safer to race the second half. Okay, here they come. Okay, so this is a five v five. We saw that they were there. Who are you looking to peel or stun here? Because like Varian's running in, right? Mm -hmm. So very right. So I'm like, you, you just you got to make sure who's zoning where. I, I see right now both Trench and Melkor are both zoning the same zone. Okay. Right? Like, if we know the game plan is to defend and siege, like, feel free, Wendy, to start ranged and then jump in after this triggers just so that way you don't ha you accidentally get knocked out or take excess damage. Yeah. It's, it's a gray main thing. It's not just you. Everyone and their mom t <laughs> likes to jump in right away and then, oh, I have to run away, and then you lose your W cooldown because you ran out and couldn't keep hitting things. Yeah. So. I, I, yep, that's me. No problem. I'm one of them. <laughs> so, okay, so we see here, Melkor tries to peel, we jump in. Um, you guys should be absolutely fine. You should all be able to run away. We honestly don't even want to fight. You almost got a kill here. Okay, so we, even though they invaded his five, Right? Like, we're all fine. Mm -hmm. Like, feel free, once that invade's done, to, like, start clearing things or, like, doing other stuff. Like, you trying to force this here is going to end bad because now it's a 5v6. They have the Immortal on the defensive. Mm -hmm. So trying to fight into them without a fight comp is not going to work well, and ne none of our people are pokers. Like, that's one of the big reasons why, like, Ming and Hanzo and stuff are prioritized on this map is because even if they five-man defend, like, Ming can bomb orbs from over here. Or, you know, Hanzo can bounce arrows and do damage to the thing, even though they're trying to defend it. But here we go. We're trying to force. Um, looks like everyone's going to make it, still. Okay, so Whiskey's trying to get creative and attacking from the side. Okay, we did a split engage there, though. So we need to make sure we call that a little bit better. I'll back up. I'm going to switch back to Merit and Cam because we took an engage there that was probably risky. And then on top of that, not everyone was on the same page for that engage. 
Okay, so we see them charging us. We get out. Everyone gets out. Uh, it's actually very good silence. It stops the follow-up on the bright wing. Okay. So if we're trying to fight here, which is fine, like, what is our kill? What is our win condition, right? Like, the only person, once again, that we're going to be able to hit is either Joe or Varian, unless somebody's way out of position. Right? So the stun's on Joe. We're leaping out of the silence. They re-engage. Right? Okay, we might be able to kill this Varian. That's a great silence. He was looking for it, too. Trenches in. And now we die. Like, there's no follow-up damage from Whiskey, because he went around this way to try and hit Immortal. And then, honestly, like, us diving into the Immortal further and further, like, we're not going to get a kill on one of those two unless they overextend. And so right. the Immortal ends up getting the kill. And Whiskey's still turreting from over here, which is sneaky. You know, he might be able to get some more damage on it, but he's going to die if he doesn't leave. Um, that's a good peel from Trench and from Luigi. Looks like everyone's going to live now. Yeah, we all live now. So, what should have been, in my opinion, the freest immortal, because we, we, didn't, we literally did not do this on time. We now got stuck trying to fight a fight, and their camp's up, and our camp is dead. <laughs> so now we're losing the macro side, and we will probably lose this objective, just because like we're not going to be able to push back in safely. So, I have not watched this, so maybe you do get the objective, but it's just one of those things where it's like, are they still five men defending? I see at least three. There's Ming. No. Damage is going down. Okay, you, so you see damage five. is going down, so now we can yep. step up. Yep, everyone's here, so we're looking. I said, but when we're, the worst, this is the right position, right here. We're not looking to fight them. Mm -hmm. We're looking to do damage. So if we can, potentially Melkor or Trench needs to be up here, and the other one over here, so that way one of the two DPS or both DPS can hit this. Because it's so low that, like, you only need to hit it, like, maybe five times for Whiskey to get the kill on this thing. So, like, if we're going to be split like this, make sure that we have equal protection for them as well. And try okay. not to fight under these circles. Like, you guys yeah. are all big. It's a three-man AoE stun here in a second. Okay, and Wendy jumped in looking for more kills because he saw that they were attacking Whiskey instead of hitting the Immortal. So we get the Immortal. That's a good boop. That's a good peel. I meant to go after the Immortal, but I didn't. <laughs> That's okay. Like, that honestly, despite, like I said, because you have such strong race, they, uh, they had race one player, at least one player, uncontested for 15 seconds and only got half health on your Immortal. Right? Like, so as I'm like, so as long as you guys race, your guys are going to win this. So, so when sieging with the Immortal, um, okay, Whiskey needs to stop being up here. Okay, hopefully he's here in time. Okay, he, now we're rotating slightly dangerously. Like, we saw the Immortal fly over, somebody was here. But it would have been nice to have this wave cleared, so that we have a wave plus the Immortal. We saw Varian here in the bush. It looks like there's a five-man defense. Oh, we didn't check this. Varian's right there. Varian's going to jump on someone. He's still up there. No, he didn't do anything with it, so it looked ended up being okay. You got the whole wall. Can you get the well, too? Nope. All right. Not bad. First immortal, you got the whole wall. They didn't soak, so you're getting the whole wall up here. This is a win. You guys are ahead. There's no deaths here. Good good boop. Yeah, great job. Okay, do not re-engage here. <laughs> we need vision first. This is dangerous. We see that they're there. Uh, we can't fight for that. That's okay. Good luck. Yeah, I, um, I think I called. Uh, don't worry about it. We can clear it. Mm -hmm. We'll be fine. This is a face check from Whiskey. Don't do that. If you think he's in the bush, use your Q or ask someone else to stand in there. You don't want to die. Yeah. Um, oh, I do an amazing face check here. Oh, excellent. So everything everything pretty much gets... Like like I said, it's hard with your team to clear because you essentially have two T-Rexes here between Whiskey and Venom. and so Or Alien. 
So it's like, it's like so like you're gonna take siege damage and a bunch of poke from Ming, and there's not really a lot you can do about it. So, so at this point, um, I don't know when Trench said he was starting this camp or he saw someone else doing the camp, but I'm glad that someone's rotating up to help. Right. So as long as that was communicated, beautiful. If Whiskey's running on his own up there, um, just I'm glad he's got the game sense for it. Because the best thing about that is Brightwing used her Z right here. So Brightwing cannot help. Right. So as long as Trench plays for the point, I should be watching bottom. But well done. You guys got the camp. Just stay healthy. Cool. All right. So what did we do while we were doing that? So waves are cleared. We're up half a level. Um, we're up structures. Everything is in your favor. This camp is up. I want to see this camp being done. Can we kill it fast enough? And the race is on our side. Yes, we can kill it fast enough. Race is on our side. Uh, what's going on up here? Trench, hopefully you live. Okay, cool. All right. I think if Whiskey leaves this a couple seconds earlier, we get this camp before the timer's up. See, I actually like this. Not not that you need to defend, but that you're playing for vision. And so, so if you see at this point... Whoops. If you see at this point that nobody's actually attacking the Immortal, you need to go back. He needs to go back. Like, you need to be defending your people. Like, mm -hmm. instead of going this far for vision, go, like, this far for vision. Okay. And then, like, we just saw two top, so there's a good chance that this bush is dangerous, or this this area. Mm -hmm. So, how much do you want to bet there's someone right here in this bush? I think they're almost all on camp. You think they're all in camp? Right. You're all right. I'm foolish. All right. I checked it with my Q. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Secret insider of knowledge. All right. So once again, your guys' race is outrageous. And, like, you legitimately get the whole thing for free. This is a good stun. Not a... No. No, 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 no. I, you, you die yeah. for this. 100%. Yep. Like, you, your leap is always out. Unless it's an engage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you shouldn't be engaging it here. A, um... It's a panic button type I thing. I know what you mean. But it's like, but you pretty much now have to ult immediately, and it's going to get 100% lost because he's already popping his D. Mm -hmm. He's hitting you with D right now. So, so pretty much the right call here, it's going to sound terrible. Melkor should scream, leave me, I'm dead. And you guys should run away. Do not re-engage here. He literally, it's like he got eaten by stitches. You're like, well, mm -hmm. he's gone. Yeah. Bye, Dave. Good job not engaging. Yep. <laughs> and then, okay. But, where are we going? We can still safely race. Right? Like, we can, we can as a team, clear top if we're not sure where they are. And have, like, Trench post up here or post up here if we think they're going to play defense. Right? Like, you literally have a 50% halftime immortal that you won and none of your racers are dead. Mm -hmm. Like, you should be looking to race outside of a full 5-on-5 five -five conflict. And so we should be all rotating up top and then at least check this bush to start and see if they're actually defending or watch the health bars. And if they're not defending, Whiskey stands right here in the bush and just auto attacks it. And Grey Mane can do it, too. Good job checking the bush. We see there's one, there's two, we leave. 100%. Just walk away. Oh, no. Uh, looks like we're okay. Cool. Okay, since they are defending, our camp is getting value. Look at this bottom building. We clear this for free, and we wait. Because if they're not going to respond to this, you get this for free. Clear this. Good, good, good. You guys are pinging. Like, how much value that's getting. Oh, Whiskey yep. face checked the bush, but he's okay. We see one person is DPSing. Melkor is almost here. This might be slightly early trench, but we'll see. And then Whiskey's going for the... I don't know if this is a flank for damage or actually going for the immortal. Oh. Looks like he's immortal. Okay. And then Greymane's on immortal. Yep, everyone's on Immortal. Yeah, I called 
Yep, oh, just mortal. race it. That's a good flap. A few seconds We're out. too late. Yep. Out, 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 out. Tumble. Well done. So, you guys actually played that correctly, despite Melkor killing himself. Yeah. Right? The only problem you had is you didn't get to the Immortal quick enough because of your death. Like, you literally lost that Immortal by almost nothing. Yeah. 484. Yeah. So, yeah. I think I said that's all you need to change is, uh, is trying to get to the Immortal. The other thing I noticed, which isn't necessarily a wrong thing, um, if we have Hyperion and the call is to win Immortal, use the Hyperion. It, like, you know what I mean? Like, oh. we have such terrible clear. Okay. Like, yeah, that you makes know, sense. If it, like, I'd say it's like, we're going to win the game with the Immortal instead of win more by saving it for sieging. Yeah. Like, we're in such a desperate spot that we will not win the Immortal. Just use Hyperion. Mm -hmm. It's not great because, like, then but now I you mean, don't have it for sieging. It might, it might be a 400 a worth of damage and enough to push them off of us. Correct. And then you now win the Immortal... And you already had structure advantage. Right. Right? So you would worst get this building. That'd be the worst case for a 10 minute immortal or 9 minute immortal. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes we just gotta use buttons even if they are win more. Just feel free to use them. Because now, effectively, all of our race damage got, got nothing. And, like, and now we use it here. This is no value. Like, mm -hmm. not to pick on whiskey. Just, they're, they're like, you're not hitting anyone with this Hyperion. Yeah, they're just like, oh, we're gone. We don't need to be here anymore. Correct. So instead, if we Hyperion this race here, you win a mortal. Mortal goes top, and you guys get this building. So, little things. We'll speed it up, see what else we did. This is the uh, five-man face check. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So, so the four man so, face check. So number one, you have a cue. We literally we literally I'm gonna back it up just to see how silly that is. You, okay, look, we're we're defending the building, right? So we're defending, we're defending, we're defending. Oh my god. That's why I'm like, I'm on your camera here. Okay, we see all four of them get up and leave. They were last seen right here. Even Ming's still here. They're last seen right here. Okay. So they're going one of two places. They're either coming down this way, or they're going to start rotating up to trench, right? So hopefully someone says, hey, they're missing. And as soon as someone says, hey, they're missing, either A, this is a check with a Q, mm -hmm. or don't even go that far. They're missing. Just, just play safe right here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Luckily, I was fast enough to uh, not die. <laughs> Luigi saved your butt, man. You were you were yeah. dead. All right. Plus, uh, well, two, ul and... two ults for a camp. All right, whatever. Uh, Trench is doing what he can up here. Camps up again. Do 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 do. We're sieging. We're about to hit 13s first. Like you guys are still ahead this game. Um, uh, whiskey's rotating up, hopefully to get camp or help. But that leaves you in a potential 4v5. Nice peels. Well done. This building's not worth it. You guys have numbers top. Right. Hopefully we get out. Excellent. We're out. Cool. 13's first. And you guys are up on everything. You guys are playing well. Um, what are we doing next? Immortal's up in 15 seconds. I don't think there's any camps to take. Nope. So we want to be in racing positions, but it's hard because race is on their side. Yeah, so, I wasn't sure mm -hmm. exactly what to do when it's on their side. So if it's on their side like that, support this to start. Okay. Right? Like, this is, like, you have a camp and Rainer pushing two things here. All right. So, yes, someone needs to clear this. So leave Greymane or someone, like, Greymane to clear this. So it's like, and everyone else needs to either A, secure this building, or B, make sure they make it out alive. Because mm -hmm. they've crossed the safe zone of halfway. We use Hyperion. I think that's questionable. I don't think Hyperion secures this. And we could have used it for race. Um, but, okay. So we do know from what we just saw, there's two top. We really don't want to team fight them. Like, we're not great team fighters. But if it's 5v3, you got this. Or if it's 6v3, you got this with the Immortal. Mm -hmm. So the person you should be looking for is not Joe. You're looking for this Ming. This Ming literally walked yeah. into the bush right here. 
She's still there. We almost did it. I saw the leap. I didn't see the Q come out. Did it miss? Or you just didn't throw it? Oh, it missed, I guess. Yeah, it missed. Because um, I saw the silence puddle. The silence puddle is right there. So that's exactly what you want. Okay, we missed our opportunity. Right? So now we're crossing onto their half of the battlefield. We don't have Hyperion. We don't have Bullet. We probably shouldn't be going any further. We should start backing up and taking this camp or doing something. Because here comes the team fight. Mm -hmm. Shield, laser. Uh, you jump back in for Wendy. It's good heals. You just might get out alive. Trenches got interrupted. That's good art defender. Yeah, we only oh, lost fight. one. So, yeah, just a little bit of overextension. Like, if you have a chance to get a kill on uh, with the, with numbers up, go for it. But after that, like, you don't have a pick comp. You have a race comp. Right. So, like, as soon as we miss that kill, all jokes aside, you get this camp. And then you race when it's on a safer side. Or you yeah. get this camp and or you siege up here. Because at halftime, it's going to go either here or here. Which is and, safer. Which will be safer for you to be able to do something with instead of going to their half. Yeah, this is where it all spiraled out of control. So, they win this, which they should. There's not really anything that you can do about that. Um, they spotted you, but you should be fine because you've got boop on trench. Oh no, trench walked up the point. And flaps. Oh no, and there's no ult. Yeah. You get one kill though. Ming gets resets though, and everybody dies. Yep. So, if we're gonna do this camp dangerously with them right here, like, our damage needs to be on point, and then, like, we have to be ready to, to zone boop them off as soon as it comes. Like, the half a step distance that you weren't there, like, you would have easily booped him off before Joe got the D off, and you would have secured that and been able to run away. Yeah, I needed to be closer to the wall instead of playing for an out. I needed to play more in, mm -hmm. I feel like, because I stepped away, because I saw that they... I, so the two that were alive, the one was... The camp that part of the camp that was still alive was on the outside. Yep. So I stepped to the outside, and then we called the boop, but my positioning for the boop was mm -hmm. bad, and so I clipped the wall. Yep. And I booped him away. Yep. So this is fine, this is fine, this is fine, right? Like, we're still good here. We see that they're coming. Ming even helps you out. This is too far. Right? Like, yeah, they don't need your DPS for this. Right. So if you instead are here... You can boop You can boop before they show up. Right. So and it's it like, boops farther. Yeah, because you would have gotten... They're not farther, but they're not like as the close. Wall. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't have clipped the wall if I yep. was in a better spot. I was but... just afraid of taking the main wall. Yep. I hear you. It's it's honestly a dangerous call in general to do this camp down a player and with them sitting right here. But right. it could have worked out if we positioned a little bit better there. I think it's just too risky. I said the first failure is the is just engaging in a fight here when we're not a fight comp. So, all right. So they get all the things. So they win this race. Oh, they didn't even finish. Oh, they did. Look at that. So the immortals literally swip spots. Like, you know what I mean? Like it was here, and now they're here. Mm -hmm. So like, if you guys would have been able to back up, take this camp, and like clear waves, and sure they win the immortal. Like as soon as it gets to your side, you guys outrace them. Like you did no damage to the immortal yet. Like, this is all whiskey. You guys did more than half immortal. Oh, damn. <laughs> like I said, I didn't realize how much damage you did. Like, like I said, I'm like, so I'm like, it's one of those things where it's like when the win condition is race, like, you do really good at it when we do it, so we don't want to be taking unnecessary fights. So. Um, it's hard, because this game, everyone wants to fight. Okay, um, 14-15, um, we have no vision of anyone, because we just did that. Muradin just rezzed, so we need to be careful up here. This is a potential engage from them, and they have the camp coming. Um, this soak down here is probably too far to get. Like, you might be able to put some counter siege, but we need to know if they're five or not. We so we actually, I... As soon as I realized how far the lane was pushed, I go immediately top. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, they did engage on Whiskey already. What are you doing, Whiskey? Don't walk back outside the gate. <laughs> Do we have Hyperion? Uh, yep. Okay. 
probably want to... Yep, thank you. Uh, no. We're not, we're not looking for the fight. This is, this is one of those things where Trench probably has a very good flank, which he does. We, we just don't have kill damage. Yeah. This is not, like, our goal is not to fight. Like, this Hyperion is great because it zones them off. We can ch chunk this guy down really hard. And then once he's dead or near dead, this building still dies. Pretty much this building dies no matter what because of the camp and everything else. Like, right. we're able to live. And then once we live or once we see that there's five here, like, no offense to Trench's character, but Trench probably gets more value getting this wall. Like, that's why I said, like, we need to see if they're five. Because if they're not five, you need to match. Because that means you're both losing Soak and you're losing a building. But since they committed five, you can get Soak here, get you guys closer to 16, and potentially put tr pressure on this okay. wall. Oh, okay. Because... I say goodbye to it and then I push somewhere else. Yeah, I'd say it's like exactly because like you right. you can't. There's no way you win this fight because yeah. of how far forward these are. Hyperion just got used. Um, bullets up. No bullets on cooldown. Yeah, we have a lot of abilities on cooldown. I don't think we should be engaging here. Like, yes, this is a weak Ming, but like none of the damage is there. And we goofed it too because I blew him out of Luigi's silence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, we, yeah, we just, this is a fight we didn't need, and uh, like I said, the Immortal was getting this no matter what. So, like, if we use the Hyperion instead to help zone clear things, and everyone that has good race damage just keeps shooting this thing, this is probably half health, and and this wave is cleared, and he's looking to put pressure here now, instead of so I, looking for three dead. Sorry, go ahead. So if I had come up top, like I did, like, mm -hmm. maybe the better play, if I come up top, was to boot them away so we can Kill the immortal, Correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, because that was my original thought coming up. But mm -hmm. coming into it, yep. Them into us. Oh, Luigi saves his life. Oh my gosh. And so, and so, because of that, because of what we did, they got both buildings right. instead of just one. They don't end here. No, no, no. They can't. So Immortal's down. Oh my gosh, Trench. Yeah, you're our Arden Defender. <laughs> we kill him. Nope. Oh my goodness, Melkor. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. It was, it was a hard night of getting hit by Li Ming all night. <laughs> all night. Goodness. Yeah. All right, so you're trying to sneak then, into this camp. Oh, just you just... Playing safe. Yep. I you saw them on it. Yep, you saw them. They're top. You can take this fight. Well done. This is the fight. Oh. Did we just it's barely? Just we just missed him. All right, now yeah. we're done. Yep, yep, we're done. We're done. We're done. Oh my gosh, Melkor! <laughs> you guys left Luigi <laughs> high and dry. Goodness gracious. Yeah. He had think... swipes, but I don't know if he could even get them off with the positioning of where you guys were, how far you were chasing. A lot of this is we're playing a comp. Wrong. Yeah. We are playing comps we're used to with characters that are for something else. No, 100%. Like, that's one of the weird things about HOTS, right? Like, you can pick Muradin and go and play pick comp. You can pick right. Muradin and go for a strategy called rats, where literally all you're doing is you're ratting around the map. You're literally, like, or squirrels is the other one. Like, you literally are never taking any fights. You're just running around the map trying to, like, mm -hmm. be annoying and do stupid stuff. It's like Muradin, Tracer, and, like, Genji. Right, I'm going to go to bed. No worries. Awesome. Have a good night, Luigi. So. Yep. I said I think that's the the key takeaway for me here is that like you guys had the winning race we just didn't race okay now we're behind yeah, then... and we still force a fight here instead of racing nope yeah. okay here we go we, we try and race uh... no we're trying yeah. to we're trying okay. to race oh race 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 there we go race race don't chase mm -hmm. race 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 Kill that Ming. Well done. See, that's exactly what you're looking for. If they're going to commit that many resources to try and stop your race while also racing, you had a numbers advantage. So that's mm -hmm. great. Um, I'm not sure how Wendy got so low here. She dies. Oh, she doesn't. Oh my gosh, you all live. This is actually very good for you. This game goes on for another like 10 minutes. 
because you should be able to clear this safely for v5, especially without Ming. Focus on the clear. Yep. See, you guys did it right this time. You focused on the clear, and you saved your building. You guys are making the comeback. You're doing it. Take that camp, because it's safe. Yep, they're doing your job. To get in vision. Looking for other things that are safe to do. They took that, so they might be coming up here. Oh, man, you face-checked another bush. <laughs> so... So if we uh, think they're... I, I was like, okay, I checked everything, and then I forget the one thing... I check, check. Yep. Nope, and you're doing good. Go up and then So your I... whole team just is like like if you were to change to the enemy team's vision for a second, right? Mm -hmm. Like I can like we see your full team five rotating yeah. through this lane. So there's no doubt where you're going. Right. Right? So it's one of those things where it's like since the lane is in their favor, you didn't know Joe's here. Like, you leaped over the wall, but <laughs> <laughs> Urel's like, hey, we need to check this bush. And then Melkar's <laughs> like, don't worry. This is my bush. <laughs> so, so if we're, like I said, we're, we're trying too hard to take fights. Like, it's really... Oh, it's just so sad. Okay, so they get the camp. Oh, who's still up there? Super split on. Uh, All right, Ural's we gonna live. There. Yep, it looks like you got split. Looks like you guys live, which is good. That's what you needed at the time. Because at this point, you guys are playing for twenties and for race. Mm -hmm. Right, like you're not looking to fight them anymore. You're hoping to get twenties. Look, there's five bottom. One, two, three. Hit this. I I think that is what we do. Good, 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 good. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. Don't even care about the minions. Yeah, perfect. Okay, we have 12 seconds. We're down 20s. We cannot fight them. So, you're... Re Ooh, there we go. So they're ready. This Brightwing is technically out of position. I don't know where the rest of his team is. But, like, if you're able to, like... So if Trench immediately boops his Brightwing here, Melkor jumps over and stuns him, and then Luigi silences him, that Brightwing dies. Brightwing Z to a teammate. Shift, yeah. She's so she's blink kill to a teammate. Okay, we're racing. She was like, oh crap. Yep. Okay, we're racing. We're racing. You're getting stunned by the immortal for free. You're taking tons of free yeah. damage here. You have to pop all. Okay, they're trying to engage on your team. Ooh, shield missed. So once again, just we got we got almost half health in the, like, four seconds that you and Trench were buying time. Mm -hmm. We back up. We try to re-engage here. Like, you can, you can, like, you're Muradin, you can technically do this, but this is, this is leaving. This is not engaging. I'm, yeah, I'm leaving. What? what? Nope, 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 nope. I could nope. tell based on where you were leaping, you were going for more. <laughs> so now, when, yeah, Wendy dies. Yeah. So, yeah, this is one of those odd things where it's like it's just we're, we're, we have the tools, but we're not playing it correctly. And so 19 versus 20. So now you see they're starting to race. They can leave someone there because it's 4v3. Like, your racer is in Whiskey. Whiskey's trying to hit it. You actually win the halftime. Hmm. It's not by much. I almost wonder... It's not going to matter when he's not going to be back in time. I was thinking, I almost wonder if it's more advantageous for you to not hit the halftime. Just because that way there's more time for stuff to come back. But it doesn't matter. He, Wendy won't be back up in time for the rest of this race. And if, unfortunately, the race switched sides. Yep, you got to do what you can. You got to try and be sneaky. Lasers down, lots of stuff's down. Uh, we just got 20s. We probably could have waited. I don't know how quick, how long we just hit 20s before you just jumped in. But I think you should have selected your 20 before you jumped in. Just yeah. so that way you have 20s. And your goal now, you cannot save this. Your goal is to make sure that Whiskey doesn't die. Mm. Right? Like, as strong as this immortal is going to be, you don't have Wendy. Whiskey's over here sieging. Like, you're buying time. Right, like by being annoying, or you're protecting whiskey. You cannot be trying to fight them here, and you just jumped okay. in. You're, oh, you didn't die for it though. Like, I don't know if 
with all that fighting, you called Whiskey off, or he saw someone. But Whiskey literally is even the play in the field by himself. Yep, and no one's here to protect him now. So. Oh, and we took a fight again for something. Yeah. So, if we... Like I said, we're playing Hail Marys now at this point. But, like, if we're trying to make something happen out of the mistakes we've made, like, Trench probably has the best survival. Trench can be annoying here and uses R and, like, boot people away and try and stop them from hitting the Immortal. And then, like, Muradin is, like, right here next to Whiskey shooting things. So that way, as they try and engage, Whiskey can run up. And then, like, if they chase you instead, you just leap. And then he comes back and attacks it again, and then you come back in, and, you know, it's like, right. you're not going to, you probably will not win this Immortal, but any damage you can take off of it means that hopefully you won't lose this and core. This dies no matter what, because of how strong the right. Immortal is. And then if that's the play you guys are doing, then as soon as Wendy reses, she can start clearing this wave. Because you guys took 14% core damage, because she tried chasing to whatever you guys were doing over here. So, oh my gosh, you lose half your core because we didn't get to that in time. Yeah, that's game. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a good boop. But... Took me a moment to notice it. Well, just, I think, it, yeah, so it's like when the hardest thing sometimes um, is when dead to figure out what do I do next. Like, just to be, like, thinking about what's the playing field, what's happening, as much as I like watching other players. Like, that's the best time to be looking at the minimap and looking around the map when dead, because then you're like, okay, I can look at stuff. I got nothing to do. Okay, I'm looking over here. Oh, I see catapults in the top. Hey, when I res, I'll, I, I got this. You know what I mean? It's like, or asking the question, hey, does anyone got this? Or do I need to do it when I res? Just so that way, you know, it's like, that way Trench can still play goaltender over here. Melkor can hopefully protect over here. Luigi can flap flap and heal over here. Like, you don't win this immortal, but you at least have a chance to, like, not die and get it low enough to where it doesn't get the core for free. So, overall, not bad, I think. Like I said, just one or two too many team fights of trying to do things that was not what your comp was designed trying to, to be, do. Trying to be a pit comp. Yep. And then the other thing to remember is, um, is that as you're looking at stuff, try your best to potentially draft that additional clear that you were missing. Like, obviously it felt a lot harder because then Ming got a lot more damage because everyone and their mom had to be at T-Rex length arms to shoot things. Okay. So, so like, as good as Greymane is, so it's like you drafted already, you know, one racer, which is why I was like, potentially you wanted to draft tank and support after your one racer, just so that way you can pivot to potentially need bad? something else. Hmm? Is it bad to first pick your racer no like for so okay one thing that like is has been drilled into my brain and i'm trying to like push it out mm -hmm. i'm listening did i lose you think that's true i 100 percent lost whatever you just tried to say there Oh, sorry. Um, so this has been drilled into my brain that under no circumstances can you pick a, quote, squishy character, for instance, like Li Ming, first pick. I would say instead of viewing it as what the hero is, you're viewing it as what the tool you're first picking. Mm -hmm. Like the first pick needs to be something that's going to help you win the game. It's going to be something that helps you win the objective. It's going to be something that is highly contested and is good all the time. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what your first pick should be. If the okay. first pick happens to be, like, you know, your team has an amazing Hanzo and they have a good Hanzo, and so you take first picks, that way they don't have it, great. So it's like, it doesn't really matter if it's Ming or a mage or anyone else's first pick. The biggest thing is mm -hmm. to draft the tool you need for your job. And so you guys picking Rainer first is good because he's a great mm -hmm. racer. Like I said, he's this is probably his best map. <laughs> it's like, but then, you know, it's like when they drafted Ming, which would be your, you know, next best racer that has poke. So it's like, mm -hmm. you need to potentially pivot from Grey Main to Jaina. Mm -hmm. Like, where's your card? I'm actually going to write that in there right now so I don't forget. 
So I feel like sometimes we we're we're missing our when we're trying to do a um not hard engaged dive comp or pick comp we are sometimes we miss out on our poke it was like you said we're all like short t-rex arms mm -hmm. and we feel like you know if we don't engage okay well they just shell us for forever all right now we do engage now we're neck deep in them and they're obliterating us mm -hmm. but in that sense we didn't even have to fight them we just need to play to our strength, which was come off the immortal or back up and do, go do something else while they're five manning. Yeah, like it. There's a reason why in the two different win condition charts that I made for you, mm. one is a team fight, defend immortals comp, right, which is kill them so they can't race, and the other one is race, which is hit it when it's safe. And as soon as they come with five, you're like, nope, I'm out. Don't wanna, don't wanna fight you. Like I just wanna hit the immortal. Yeah, I think I was like, okay, I know that's what we need to do, but mm -hmm. then, oh, it's hard. I even I have that problem where it's like I know we have a race comp, and like there's literally someone out of position. I'm like, oh my gosh, everyone yeah. throw your abilities at this. We can kill this person. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, we didn't kill them, and now all five of them are here, and we and... died because we took a team fight. And it's like, whoops. Yeah. Like, whoops. <laughs> it's like, so. Or the other thing I'm, I think I'm having a little trouble with is keeping track of everybody. Like, I think some of those times when Whiskey left, like, I didn't even know he was gone or where he was. Mm hmm. Which. It is something to communicate too. If he's going to help get the camp or help support, like I, he did good plays, he was up there. He helped um, Trench get some the camp. Of them, I like, have that I problem too. Some of them I noticed while he was going, and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's good. Go get that camp where Trench was calling for help. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. What'd you say, Wendy? Uh, sometimes I have that problem too, but like. I'll be doing something and coming back and I don't know where someone is because there are other icons hiding their hiding theirs. I'm like Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm where is, where are people? Yeah. Feel free. You don't play with a camera lock, right, Wendy? Uh is that where it follows me around? Yeah, so like you can't like you can't essentially click out of the square of the screen that you're on. Like, if you wanted to go look at boss, can you physically click and look at the boss? Or it oh, is... yeah. And then it's like, it's like, and then the camera is not hovering on top of you, right? Like, if you ever hit space bar. Yeah. Uh, no, I can click on the main map to where I want to look. Mm -hmm. I can okay. do that. Okay. Because, yeah, there's a... There's a camera lock thing, which I know people do when they play Cho'Gall, because it's like, I don't need to do anything. I'm just Gaul. Let me throw things. So mm -hmm. that way I, I'm, like, locked into the body. But, like, you say it's like you don't want to be playing camera locked if you don't have to, because then you can look at stuff. I so, didn't think of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just making sure that you're, you know, it's like, it sounds funny, but, like, on, like, that shaman comp camp, like, you don't really need to be watching what you're doing. Like, as soon as you hit Q once and hit W, your dog's going to sit there and keep attacking it. So you can, like, you know, look around on the minimap or look around at the map and be like, okay, where's Melkor? Where am I going next? Or, you know, what's the team doing? And then, like, as soon as the camp's captured, like, if you need to see your character, you can hit spacebar, and it instantly brings your camera back to yourself and gives you a giant blue column over your head of this is where you are. Mm -hmm. So, but um, where is that the camera lock? L is the letter for camera lock. That's normal keybind. Mm -hmm. So if you hit L, it locks it on your character, and you can't. Ooh. You can't look around. That's nice. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had camera lock on. Oh <laughs> my gosh! No way! This whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It'll take you a little bit of getting used to not having it on, just so you know. Oh, Ooh, man. That's nice. I can actually scroll over to something without uh, 
moving your character. Oh my yeah. gosh. Melkor, Melkor just unlocked a whole new level of the game. Oh my right. goodness. Hey, maybe you won't face check and stuff as much. <laughs> I couldn't see off my screen that they went into the bush. I couldn't see it. That's all I get is by like five inches on each side of my character. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Well, we're all learning new things. That's fun. So, all right. Um, I got to head to bed. But like I said, I think big picture, I look at that game, and, and you guys, every time you raced, you did great. Every time you tried to force a fight, the team fight won, and you weren't the team fighter. <laughs> so continue to, um, if you're going to play that race comp, just remember your goal is race. And, and feel free to use your tools to secure the race. Like, I think you guys win that second Immortal if Whiskey throws his uh, Hyperion at it compared to using the Hyperion on the defense. So Before you step off, can I just ask if yeah. the Urel was, was right there? Like, I know that there was some of the boops and some of the positioning and things like that that were good and some things that were mm -hmm. you know, I, a little I, bit less. But I personally love Urel there, like, as a character, okay. because, you're, like I said, once again, your win condition was hit immortal. So if you have two beefy bodies that mm -hmm. ensure that the two people that are supposed to hit it can hit it safely because both of you hypothetically should never die. Like, Urel has a get-out-of-jail-free card. Muradin has extra health. You both have leaps. You know what I mean? Like, if you are protecting your racers to where they can hit the immortal, you win. And Urel has good soak. You know, it's like, right. so I, to me, I'm like, that was a good pick. Like I don't see a I don't see a problem that with was, that. That was a hundred percent Melkor's call on I mm -hmm. I I liked it in concept, but mainly in execution. Like you mentioned and my thought process when we went into that was Melkor, Melkor and I are gonna go be annoying and free up our people to race. Mm -hmm. So in retrospect of changing how we utilize that resource mm -hmm. I think the utilization piece of it was maybe where we were. Because mm -hmm. if your goal like, just as an example, if we swap out, um, swap out Urel for Sonya, right? So we now we have Leap Sonya. You can make that flank. Yeah. You can make that flank up top, Leap Sonya right on top of that Li Ming, and Melkor follows yeah. up. That's a dead Ming, and there's nothing yeah. they can do. So it's like, but once again, like we're changing what our strategy, our goal is, and like you seeing that as last pick being like, hey, I see that we got little arms and we can't really engage. What if mm -hmm. I go leap? You know, okay. that's fine. So it's like, but I still think it's super dangerous because there's a good chance you're going to leap into a team and it's going to be three on one or four on one. And sure, Sonya's a beast, but like you get Polymorph by Brightwing and you're not going to be so happy. So <laughs> Correct. So as I said, I'm like, if you're going to go Sonya and that type of like engage, deep engage... Like, several heroes on your team need to change. So that way you can follow up on that. Because right now, there's no follow-up on that leap. You know what I mean? Like, Muradin yeah. can jump in with you, sure. But, like, uh, but Rainer no, like... and Greymane can't reach you. Especially with, with that one flank angle. I'm like, there's no way they can follow up. Like, Greymane has to be literally on top of Melkor's butt to be able to try and reach the target that he's leaping to. Yeah. So, yeah. Like I said, so I, I honestly think Ural was a great pick there. Um... If I had to audible into something else, um, potentially Blaze. Blaze has the same thing. You know, Blaze has got an escape mechanism. He's got a big stun. He's got bunker. So, you know. That was the other one that I think that we were playing around with. Yeah, I think either one of those is fine. I I, I, like, I personally like Urel better in a defense comp just because um, it kind of brings that ETC boop shenanigans since you're playing full right. defense. And it's tankier than ETC. <laughs> So, yeah, like I said, I think you guys drafted well. I think you guys just lacked execution on um, actually racing every time it was time to race and then just kind of working through that mental gymnastics now of, okay, we want to race. Oh, look, there's five players. We just walk away. Where can we get value elsewhere? What else can we do right now while they're sitting five players here? You know, and, it's like, and sometimes it's you can't do a lot. Sometimes it's literally I cleared the two lanes, you know, or I'm taking this camp because there's nothing else to do because they're sitting here, like, playing defense. 
And if, like, if the five of them try to invade your camp, right, like that one that was on your left-hand side, like, if the five of them are trying to jump into your camp, well, now it's five on five, and they're potentially taking tower shots jumping into your camp. Like, they shouldn't be able to steal that camp from you with all five players up. So, like I said, like, it's, it's just that change in that mindset of, you know, it's like fight, fight, fight. Like, check the... I guess last thing, um, if you were to change up the composition and make it, you know, a, a team fight comp, right? Like our win condition is like run at them and hopefully find somebody that is straggling or find someone and kill them because now you know, it's, it's like we throw all of our ults at somebody and they died. Sweet. You guys don't feel comfortable racing now because it's a 4v5. Okay. Our one person on our team that can race and do damage, go do that. Right, like in your win condition um, comp, right, when you're playing with like a defensive, uh, when you're playing the kill comp, and you've got Gazlo, right, like so Gazlo and Tank and Offlane are potentially like standing there, puppy guarding it with Brightwing guarding it, and then Greyman goes and runs into camps, or goes, goes and does the objective. It's, it's like, or Li Ming goes and does the objective, or Jaina goes and does the objective. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can just run off and do that. Or, depending on how many you kill, you only need to leave, like, Muradin. Muradin and maybe Luigi, <laughs> and everyone can go hit fight the objective. Right? Like, so it's just, just one of those things where it's a tug of war. And so it's like, which way did we want to win, or how do we win? So. Mm -hmm. yeah. and at some point, if you do get a chance to just take a minute and watch my URL because I don't play her very much mm -hmm. and I would love to know like a little bit more in detail what went well and what was mm -hmm. on the actual gameplay if, if, if that's okay I know you've already taken a look at that one but mm -hmm. I feel um, like URL potentially is strong but I just need to I need to get more comfortable okay um, let me make a note so I can think about doing that let me see what yeah, time it looks like you know, I said I have a feeling it may get sidelined for a bit because I have a feeling that we're probably going to want to go over our games that we play tomorrow, right. and then. But mm, I will yeah. leave it on my radar as a I wanna, as a review hero. Cause I feel like Urel is super strong, and she can do the same things that some of the same things that Mattel can do, but safer. The yeah, the biggest difference between Urel and Malthiel, honestly, is is uh, camp speed. Like, cause Urel can't camp. Like, say it's like Mike, but Malthiel can camp, and then so like, so like anytime you think you want Malthiel, say it's like, but you need you to your point someone that's just safer, or stronger. Like you can pick Urel. Urel's got great double soaking characteristics. In the same way, like you can pick, um, you know, it's like if you're just purely trying to double soak, you can grab Zool. You know, there's lots of heroes that double soak really well and are safe. Um, Blaze can double soak. He's not as safe as Urel, but he's still super strong. Sonya can double soak and can and can camp. Just the funny part is she camps better than she double soaks. So it's like it's just like this weird like little lever of like which one do we need? <laughs> it's yeah, like I need to, maybe I need to make the the trench spreadsheet of decision making. <laughs> go for it. Yeah. So do I right. need X Y Z and then? Yeah. So oh, thank you. Urel. Pointers review and it's B O E eight eleven twenty one match. What's funny is we played uh, a um 